What's up guys, Mainly Hockey Cards here. I'm sorry this video is coming out so late. I've had COVID for a little over a week or so, and I finally feel good enough to record and post this. Today, I thought I'd share some of my secrets with you guys, and hopefully you can get some great deals too. So here are 10 helpful tips to get better deals on hockey cards when you're shopping on eBay. Number one is if you're just looking for hockey cards, don't search hockey cards. When you search for hockey cards, you'll see a similar result to this. You'll want to instead search for ice hockey, which picks up on the sport listed in the item description. While it will initially say around the same amount of results, sort by newly listed, and you'll see over 4 million results. This leads to my second tip, and it's if you want a certain player set, just start with a player's name and add ice hockey. So instead of searching Austin Matthews hockey card, which yields a little over 1,000 results, Search Austin Matthews Ice Hockey, which yields over 12,000 results. This works for all players and sets. eBay changed their searching format around a year ago, and Ice Hockey is picked up on as it's used in hockey card sport descriptions when you list the item. My third tip is to always be on the lookout for lots. Some of my most frequent search terms are as follows. Ice Hockey Lot, Ice Hockey Patch Lot, Ice Hockey Auto Lot, and Ice Hockey One of One Lot. If you're buying with the intent to resell, buying a lot of cards is usually a great way to go about things as they're typically priced under what the market value would be of every card if sold individually. Sellers will need money and or don't have the time to list everything out, so their loss is your gain if you can put in the work. Of course, this isn't always the case, so you do still need to research what you're buying before you buy it. My fourth tip is that auctions typically go for less than a buy it now listing and you can really use this to your advantage. If a card is ending for considerably less than its lowest buy it now option or recent comparable sales, then it's probably worth picking up and flipping. Buy it now is more popular amongst buyers because purchases are instantaneous and there's no waiting game or trying to outbid other people. Again, it's more of a convenience thing so many auctions will often get overlooked. At number five, it's all about timing. I'm up at some weird hours of the day and night, and some of the greatest deals come at non-peak traffic times for eBay, including auctions ending really early in the morning or really late at night, and the same for buy it now listings at those times of the day. When there's less site traffic at abnormal hours, you're going to see less competition for what you're going after. Tip number six is seemingly simple, but I feel that most people don't understand it. Take advantage of combined shipping and getting multiple cards from the same seller. Don't see a combined shipping kind of discount? Just ask them. Send them a message before you bid or buy. If you find a card for a great deal, more than likely the seller also offers other cards at a great deal. If you make an offer for something and they accept, you know, see if they'll accept on a different card too. Instead of paying $4 of shipping for individual cards, paying $5 for shipping in total for five cards is a heck of a lot better if you're still getting the deals. You'll be saving a ton of money too. Tip number seven is to buy from new sellers. Some are experienced while others aren't, and I find that new sellers often attract less buyers because their descriptions or titles are often vague and feedback is low. People simply do not trust them. However, with the eBay money back guarantee in place, I've quite literally never been screwed over by a low feedback or new seller. And remember, us sellers, we all started from that same spot too. Number eight is to try and manipulate searches. This is a little bit more complicated because it does require knowledge of a product or player. However, I've found some great deals because people list things differently. So if you're looking for precious metal gems cards, for instance, try searching PMG ice hockey, then precious metal gems ice hockey, then metal ice hockey number to 100, then hockey PMG, and so on. You'll see a lot of irrelevant listings, but you're almost guaranteed to find new listings that probably weren't previously seen because they're under a different search term than what anyone else searches for. Similarly, try searching Crosby's name spelled wrong as Sydney, S-Y-D-N-E-Y, and you'd be surprised how many listings there actually are. From easy names to complex names, people butcher these names all the time. Tip number nine is to never judge a listing by the first photo. I actually made a video about this way back as one of my first videos on the channel. And it's absolutely crazy to me how people will look at a listing and then not look past the first picture. You know the journey of a one cent hockey card lot series I'm doing? Classic example of this. 
The first picture is nothing to behold, and I guarantee that 99% of those who viewed it didn't bother because of the impression of the first picture. But I looked, and I'm glad I spent that extra 30 seconds. Lastly, number 10 is coming full circle. Search ice hockey, sort by newly listed, and just refresh the page. Especially in peak traffic hours, there's sometimes dozens of new items listed every minute. And with that many new items coming in, you're bound to find some deals that are priced below comps. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned something new from it. If you did, leave me a comment down below and maybe even share a deal you got by using one of these methods. If you did enjoy the video, leave a like and consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Thanks everyone.